So moving on to the Ela Green School. So these are some of the images that you see of the school. Owner being Ela Educational Trust, and we were the architects as well. So the built-up area is around eighty-six thousand square feet. Location is in Chennai. So Chennai, we all know, is a very warm and humid climate. So um, we followed. So we did a truly integrated design approach where all the team members it could be the mep consultant the architect the electrical uh, contractor the uh, hvac contractor are um, so this was a precast building so we had the precast contractor all of us had uh, were on one platform we sat and uh, designed various parameters together at the same table to get the best possible out So these were our design strategies. If you look at the building envelope per se, we did not want to go completely with DGU. So the building itself is designed such that there are a lot of shading pockets that are created because of the form of the building. So therefore, wherever there was direct impact and there was a harsh impact, DGU was opted for, and SGU wherever it there was a shading uh, component. and if you see we have used both wall and roof insulation this being a precast structure it was easier for us to specify to the contractor that we wanted our walls insulated similarly the roof as well and uh, roof also has not only the hollow core slab plus the insulation but also reflective paint so what the reflective paint does is uh, i don't know how many of you all have been to temples even tirupati temple they they would have painted there there would be white paint near the black tarta road and why is that because you cannot walk on the black road because it's going to be extremely hot whereas if you walk on the painted part of the road it you it's you can still walk so this is because this these are nothing but high reflective paints which reflect the heat of the surface and keep the surface of the road cooler similarly this is what we're trying to achieve on the roof as well and uh, so ventilation was another part of the um, envelope design which i'll talk about it on because this we did not want it to be a completely air conditioned building although it is air conditioned we did not want to operate it as a completely air conditioned building throughout the year because some parts of the year are relatively cooler and uh, our primary goal again just as it would be with any envelope design is to make sure that the inside is the closest to comfort zone without any mechanical systems so that with that as the primary goal and the thermal comfort conditions we back worked on the envelope design so if you see this is one of the initial drawings uh, of the project where we would have done uh, sketches if you see we've marked you can see some markings here so these are uh, the initial concept design drawings of how we'll try and bring in ventilation into the building so uh, this is later on this is the final version of the drawing after various iterations etc if you see all the classrooms are modular so i can either convert this space into one whole library or i can have so everything it's modular so it just starts rep it's rep repetitive in nature so that way we can uh, you know kind of uh, keep it flexible for future expansion growth incorporation of technologies any of those kind of parameters and um, if you see we've also created spaces here these pockets the purpose of these pockets were so the school building is basically a pre kg to a grade 12 uh, building and grade 12 or the higher grades 6th 7th 8th and so on are okay they can play outside in the harsh sun and they will uh, they're still fine but what about small children and we know we have more summer than uh, rainy season in our uh, climatic condition so what we do is we wanted the tot lot areas to be shaded so all the tot lot areas and the play areas for children to interact had to be shaded so the building uh, the entire planning was done such that we have these pockets of spaces which would be shaded so the building is again north east facing based on our simulation analysis and uh, was also designed to so if you see this is our north this is our north 
and uh, we've also planned our glazing elements to uh, to be minimal in fact so uh, I, I did speak about landscape in the facade or in the envelope design which actually has an impact. Uh, we also know that studies by the Lawrence Berkeley laboratory indicates that temperature under trees can be 14 degrees Celsius cooler than temperatures over tar top roads. So uh, actually the original design has a lot of roads around the building this is required for the fire movement, fire engine. So even if you are looking at reflective paved roadways also there is going to be a large impact of heat, heat gain into the building as a result of road area. So this is why we had planned a lot of green walls in the facade. So the front facade to make it look better has the, the green walls in this fashion. The rear facade also has green walls but creepers will be used. So uh, we spoke of glass. So when we said glass, glass varies from the cost of glass, you have glass varying from 75 rupees a square feet to say 270 rupees a square feet. So which means you, it can you know triple the cost of your usage, your glass component if you are looking at the best performing glass. So how do we make sure that uh, you know we can keep the cost of glass minimal at the same time have the same impact of. Uh, you know using a high performance glass. So this is where we tried and studied um, where all should we use the double glaze units because there are there is a lot of shading elements that you see that uh, shading because of the building design. And uh, if you notice this building does not have any external shading devices. So there are components of the building which has direct glass and all of those components will use double glaze unit but all those which face corridors etc will have single glaze, single glass. And uh, also the window to wall ratio. So if you see the original design which is this image, you have three windows on one facade and you have uh, one window whereas you can see the dark pockets in the entire uh, classroom. So we do not want such dark pockets at the same time we do not want extreme glare coming in as well. So this this light green yellow portion shows uncomfortable light whereas the dark blue portions incre, uh, indicate adequate diffuse light. So what we did we converted the doors also. So there are doors on either side which were initially constructed to be uh, opaque medium have been converted to glass. So that way we actually achieve adequate diffuse light. And our window to wall ratio is designed at 31 percent which was ideal for us to bring in uh, you know adequate daylight as well into the classrooms. So I also spoke of choice of materials. So this being a precast construction, these are some of the photographs that were taken during construction if you can see. Uh, you, can you see this green portion here? That is our insulation. So we have used about 40 mm of uh, extruded polystyrene insulation between uh, sandwiched between two concrete uh, panels. Again the insulated panels were not used everywhere. There is a combination of panels that were insulated and a combination of plain concrete panels depending on the direct heat gain analysis again. So only those areas which had to face the direct heat or the direct sun's rays had insulated panels. And if you see the roof, this is our uh, uh, section of the wall, 60 mm concrete, 40 mm insulation and 150 mm concrete. Similarly, if you look at the roof, uh, so the precast system comes with a system of hollow core roof slab and uh, then again all over topping concrete, your waterproofing, etc. your insulation was 50 mm. So this gives us a desired U value or thermal property of 0 0.55 watts per square meter Kelvin and uh, for again wall we are looking at 0 0.61. So what did we achieve? We have done this whole exercise and uh, you know double glaze versus single glass, uh, daylight analysis or uh, energy simulation analysis 
if you can actually see the classroom, we change this to glass doors. So, if you actually see there is adequate diffuse light in the classroom. Look at the temperature difference. This was recorded on 10th April at 1 pm, which is one of, uh, which is pretty much your peak summer uh, time. Your outside temperature is 39.6 degrees. Your inside temperature is 30.2. So, what is our differential that we are looking at? We have achieved a good differential of 9 degrees or so, 9.4 degrees or so. So, even in summer, you walk into that classroom at 39 degrees outside temperature, you are immediately going to find it more comfortable. And uh, please note this is just by the use of the envelope. This is just by appropriate insulation, landscape on walls and uh, you know glass, high performance glass, all of that we have achieved this. Now, in addition, so when we took these temperature readings, we also did uh, analysis on how do we increase ventilation. So, this the ventilation mechanism was not in place. This is just an ad average building with your walls, roof and your glass taken into account. So, remember when we did our initial integrated design approach with all our uh, consultants, contractors in place, we actually wanted to enhance the indoor air temperatures or enhance the performance of the building in terms of thermal comfort inside the classrooms without air conditioning system. So, case 1 we said uh, you know how do we do it? We increase the openable window area, we increase DGU area, we add shading devices to our building. Hmm. Second we said let us try in something called the assisted ventilation. How did we achieve that? So, every classroom has two shafts. The sh again, all of this was done with a scientific analysis to support all our calculations. So, once we come up with a design and, an ana and a theory or uh, to prove that we are, we, we are doing the right thing, we can always back it with various analysis. We have today a lot of tools that help us in terms of daylighting, in terms of uh, energy, in terms of airflow. So, we did a CFD analysis as well. So, this has a turbo fan on the roof which connects all basically a hollow shaft that connects across the classrooms vertically and you have turbo fans uh, at the rooftop which create a, a negative pressure. So, you are basically trying to increase your wind velocity. So, this is what I said it would be your typical floor, your classroom. So, initially we had said uh, we will have shafts in two directions. But uh, later on after the analysis we realize a uh, not so much as per the analysis, but in terms of our, uh, our uh, precast systems, they said it was wiser to have diagonal shafts. So, today we have actually every classroom has two diagonal shafts, this is not there. And uh, so, this is why we need also every team member to be a part. So, let us say I uh, you know we decided to put in a shaft. Without the approval or the knowledge of the precast contractor, we cannot take some a decision like this. So, it was always good to have everybody on the same platform and this is what was the system design. So, this was our CFD analysis to determine the size of the shaft, the size of the opening in each classroom. So, if you see this is our CFD analysis. So, when the air leaving the exhaust is at 29 degrees. Right? So, we are showing a 2 degree differential with the usage of shafts, which will still. So, if I can my 9 degree differential, when I operate the shaft can make it 11 degree differential, I do not need to use AC. A 39 degrees outside and if I am able to achieve a 28 degrees inside my room, I do not need an AC. So, this is just to show you, uh, this is the chart, basically our analysis chart. So, if you see this is a school building right. So, we take the operating hours from 8 am to 3 pm and from Jan to December if you see the number of operating hours is 176, 160, 184 depending on number of working days, Saturdays, Sundays etcetera. Now, what is maximum adaptive temperature? So, in Chennai somebody if I am sitting in Chennai I am very comfortable at 30 degrees. You put me in uh, Berlin winter, I will freeze. 
I will freeze at 20 degrees also because I am used to this. So, people in Chennai are used to a certain adaptive comfort temperature which is what we will take into account when we are doing our comfort analysis. So, we can always say the comfortable temperature is 24 plus or minus 2. So, 22 to 26 not necessarily may be comfortable for most of us who sit here. So, um, if you see the adaptive temperature is around 28, 29, 31 sometimes in June. So, this is again a uh, standard analysis. So, the initial design that we did, uh, we were able to achieve the number of comfortable hours. If you see this column, this column, what we were able to achieve is 104, which means only 59 percent of the time in January, we were able to achieve comfort conditions during operating hours. Similarly, if you take in June, only 7 percent of the time we were able to achieve comfort hours. Now, I will add my case number 1. Okay? I add uh, DGU, I add some shading elements, I do all of those analysis and I have achieved if I do all of that. My analysis says instead of 59 percent, I have increased it to 86 percent. So, obviously, compared to the first uh, you know 104 hours, I have increased it to 86 percent from 59 percent which is still good. Now, what do I do if I add my assisted ventilation shafts? Then I have increased my number of comfortable hours to 100 percent. So, from my original design of 59 percent, I have moved to 100 percent in January. So, I do not need AC in January. Similarly, in February, I have increased it to 80 percent. I do not need AC again. March, it is slowly becoming 54, 41, 21 percent my worst case scenario. But if you actually see, I have increased it from 8 percent to 21 percent. So, I can use AC, but I will be using it for 80 percent of the time. So, approximately, I mean not necessarily, I could probably use it throughout the day, but this is what I am trying to achieve by saying bring the building closest to thermal comfort conditions that you can. So, without the AC, I most of the time, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 months in a year, I do not have to use AC at all, maybe the other 6 months I can do it. So, this is how at an average from 30 percent, I have increased my design, uh, my performance of my design to make sure that 60 percent of the time it is comfortable, which is twice as much. Okay, this is just a bar graph to show initial design, second and ultimately with your use of assisted ventilation shafts. So, uh, moving on to the next case where uh, this is the Coal India corporate office building, the owner being Coal India, the architect was a famous architect from Delhi, Rajrewal Associates built up area as 2, 2 lakhs 50,000 square feet. So, we were basically the green consultants in this project and uh, this was one of our first few projects. I think we started working on this in 2010 or so and uh, location is Kolkata again a very hot and humid climatic condition. So, here we really do not have the flexibility to play around with design because again the architect uh, has done his own set of analysis. So, if you see the function and shape, is there a pointer here? Okay, if you see the function and shape here, there is the floor plate that is designed like this. So, why is the floor plate, the depth of the floor plate, this is the open office area again all of this is the open, all of this is the open office area. The depth of the flow plate in all these areas is kept to such a, uh, to, the, to a width so that there is adequate daylight penetration from both sides and that is why he has given us the central courtyards in the center, right. And this is the central atrium, uh, this is the MDs and the chairman block this site hmm, that you see here. Hmm. 
So, the most critical component where uh, a lot of people would be working and would be sitting around would be this stretch. Now, these two why if you can actually see the building is in a stepped fashion. Any reason why stepped fashion? We have a central courtyard here. Now, if the central courtyard has to be effective, we need to make sure there is enough daylight penetrating even to the ground floors. So, what happens is a cylindrical form if you if, if let us assume there was no step and this is how the building was. Then you are creating a cylinder over there and this entire portion is going to be blocking your daylight inside as well. So, the lower floors will not achieve the adequate daylight. So, there is a reason why he has done this. So, this is our energy analysis. Now, initially all of this was glass, there was a lot of glass that was being used in the initial design. So, much so moving to window to wall ratio or window to wall ratio in the initial design if you see this is our initial model was greater than 60 percent. So, we had uh, discussions with the architect and we come back and say you know the, this is what our analysis indicates we need to do something. Of course, the, uh, we do not want to compromise on the elevation as well because the architect uh, has put in a certain effort into the design process. So, what we did is we actually brought in an introduction of wall up to the sill level. So, wherever when I am saying wall up to sill level, so this is your slab, then this is again the other flow slab, right. So, here this, this whole thing becomes your vision panel. So, your glass is completely there, but let us say we introduce a wall up to sill level. So, now only this portion is your vision panel although you have glass here, this will be glass from the outside view, but will not be vision panel. So, for, uh, for us uh, in terms of energy analysis, we will only take into account this portion as your uh, window to wall ratio. So, after uh, our energy analysis we did a redid after the sill level came up, our window to wall ratio was brought down to 38 percent. And as I told you, we had all the luxury, so we used uh, uh, DGUs. I think they belong to the SKN series from Saint Gobain, which had uh, 0 0.24 SHGC and a visual light transmittance of 39 percent. And uh, roof over deck insulation was used, so they used 75 mm thick extruded polystyrene. And for wall, there was a lot of wall area, so to bring in an insulation would not have been the right thing. So, what they did instead is go in for uh, 200 mm thick aerated aerocon blocks. I think uh, they were able to achieve a fairly good uh, U value of 0 0.2 or so, hmm, which is uh, quite an effective uh, value to have achieved. And also if you see, uh, there is an additional layer of glass. So, the architect if you see here has used an additional layer of glass, again this is to avoid the harsh glare, so that they do not have to actually use uh, your uh, blinds or screens inside the building. So, and at the same time use, usage of glass brings in some kind of daylight as well. So, I was told that they actually do not use blinds in the building. So, what did we achieve? We have achieved energy savings with solar close to 60 percent. And they this this uh, project used uh, if you actually see the solar I will uh, try and show you the uh, if you see this 140 kilowatts of solar was integrated into the building envelope design because we did not have enough roof area all of this is solar that has been planned on the building. So, 140 kilowatt of solar was also planned. So, the envelope as such uh, was effectively designed to include all of these parameters, glass, your uh, wall, your solar as well. So, we have achieved uh, without solar 42 percent, additional solar was uh, 58 percent and spaces with the daylight was again 78 percent and spaces with access to views was completely 100 percent because most of your regularly occupied areas was under the open office area.